Dr. Levine, why don't you tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do? Happy. Thank you. First of all, Stacey, thank you for inviting us. And I appreciate being here. And your podcast is tremendous reputation. And uh, it's uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to share my thoughts and to some of my ideas. So my name is Dr. William Levine. Everybody calls me Bill. I've been practicing periodontology or periodontics for over 35 years. And periodontics is basically the um, treatment of the area around the teeth. The teeth are fused to the bone of our, our jaws, and the anchorage of the tooth is in a into the bone. And so it has to be a sterile environment. It can't be exposed to the outer world. But the teeth function in the oral cavity, so it's teeming with bacteria. And so the body has a special mechanism where it has very active, uh, let's say, immunoprotective cells, which seal a, a circular ring around the neck of the tooth, and it's very active in preventing infection, inflammation, and things like that. And so um, basically, uh, that's how the body functions. In other words, anchored into the bone and functioning in the mouth with that seal of protective ring around it. And what happens is periodontal disease <clears throat> surprisingly affects about and the, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, reports that periodontal disease affects 50% of the American adult population over the age of 35 with a significant level of disease. That's an enormous number. That means most of us are suffering from periodontal disease of one form or another. And so I, in my earlier years, I dedicated my life to helping treat periodontal disease. And as I got older, and hopefully smarter, although that's debatable, then I basically tried to incorporate not only preventing or treating disease, but actually, but preventing disease and managing disease so that once you treat it, it continues to stay stable. And that's why we developed the unique mouth rinse periactive. And, and that was uh, really the point that I was driving in. So thank you. Can you tell us a little more about that product? Because before our conversation, before we started to record this podcast, you were telling me um, exactly what it could do and how it could benefit society. And I found it very interesting on the importance of uh, this product and what it could do to benefit people. Well, I'm happy to share. I think I'd like to, if you don't mind, take a step backwards a little bit. And mm -hmm. all of us, I mean, and I, I feel free... I, I grew up studying, you know, dental diseases and studying dentistry as a profession. And despite that, we have a tendency to take our teeth for granted. Yes. And um, we it's just the nature of the human being, I think. And so we don't quite realize what a major impact the teeth have in the terms of our daily function. In other words, we communicate by speech and by facial expressions. Our smile communicates our hello and our contentment with that person. And so your smile, your aesthetics, your speech, and your eating, your, chew, your, able, your ability to chew and enjoy food. So the teeth actually contribute an enormous part to the quality of our life and to the enjoyment of our life and our ability to communicate with people that we'd like to. And to communicate, and to discommunicate, if that's a word, with people who we don't want, who we don't want to communicate with. So the, um, but it, maintaining the health of our teeth is critical. Now, periodontal disease. What happens is, and I just go back to what I said earlier about that ring of protective um, cells. What happens is, if we have, if that ring of protective cells is stimulated negatively, or let's call it irritated by a, a large buildup of bacteria or different traumas or different factors that may influence it. It also could be systemic illnesses. Then what happens is it doesn't, it begins to dysfunction. And I use that word specifically because inflammation, when you have a problem and the body reacts in, with an inflammation, that's healthy. And we refer to that as reactive inflammation. But let's say, for example, you hurt your shoulder, you're playing ball, and your shoulder's sore after a day, and that's okay. That's normal. And even if it swells up, it's normal. Now, if it goes down after a couple of days when, of resting it, that's the normal reaction. But let's right. say it stays swollen and painful and gets more and more swollen and painful, and it's now three or four weeks after the injury. 
you have a problem. The inflammation there is not treating the disease. It's actually contributing to the disease process. And that's referred to as chronic or dysregulated, more accurately, inflammation, where the inflammation is functioning, but it's no longer treating the problem. Usually it's actually driving the problem to get worse. And what we need to do then is a number of things. We need to treat the disease origins, but we also need to treat the inflammation. So um, that's what happens in gum disease. If that if that ring of protective cells is in a dysregulated or chronic state, what happens is it uses its protective powers to try to solve the problem, but in actuality, what it's causing is destruction of the bone and the ligament that are holding the teeth in place. And then you start to see symptoms like loose teeth, teeth that are drifting, red and bleeding gums, and let's say a swollen gums. And as the disease progresses, you will have teeth that really can't even support the normal function, and you begin to lose teeth. And at that point, you've really caused an enormous amount of damage to yourself, both in your inability to function, all the areas that we talked about earlier, but also you have a disease going on, an inflammation and an infection going on inside your mouth, which is not as small as it seems, because if you lay out the whole surface area of that, it's probably bigger than the palm of your hand. So that's a big area of suppurating inflammation, which is spreading out into your body. And it causes not only problems orally, but it also causes problems systemically. And it's been associated with increase in heart attacks, increase in fetal health for pregnant women, increase in dementia and Alzheimer's, increase in different cancers. The list is innumerable. And it's not that periodontal disease causes these problems, but by elevating the inflammatory profile in your body, and you're basically in an unhealthy state, even if you don't realize it. And all those other diseases have an ability to proliferate and get worse independently. So that's that that's a major problem, which is why oral health is so critical. Now, a lot of people don't realize, but when the bacteria formulates in your mouth, how dangerous it could be for a person's health and how it could actually uh, cause someone to decline in their health. Um, how Can you explain to people when, when you start to notice symptoms and you start to notice either pain or discomfort or inflammation in the gums, why it's so important to go and get medical assistance and have a, a dentist or a, a periodontalist or you know a, someone in the field of dentistry look at it and actually provide treatment for this? So I think... <laughs> In the early stages, irritated gums and bleeding gums, if you have it for a day or two, and then it goes away because you brush it well, (laughs) excuse me, that's not really a problem. That's the reactive inflammation and your treatment doing its job. But let's say you have bleeding gums every time you brush your teeth, or even worse, every time you uh, eat, which means that some type of food is touching the gums and that's sparking some bleeding, you have a problem. That's a case where the inflammation is no longer reactive, becoming dysregulated. And if you catch that in the early stages of the disease, it's completely reversible. A thorough diagnosis and analysis of that with, let's say, and a few sessions of deeper cleaning to get rid of the irritants will eliminate that disease and you won't have damage. But if you leave that for too long and the inflammation in the or the powers of that protective ring are used in a way that is actually causing destruction, then you will start to lose bone and that's irreversible. There already you need much more, um, let's say invasive forms of therapy and much more uh, extensive therapy in order to recapture some of that. And we've come a long way in our treatment, but our goal really is to stabilize the disease and make sure it doesn't continue to progress. And in a sense, that's where I morphed into my practice, and I'm still practicing actively, but uh, in developing periactive rinse. Because if you think about it, we all grew up on fresh breath and happy smiles and things like that. And that's great. I'm a big fan. We all are. But basically, all they're doing is killing some of the bacteria that are in your mouth. The bacteria are not independent animals. They're not independent biomes. They function layer upon layer upon layer, and that's how they grow. So if you kill the outer layer, you're really just killing a few of the bacteria, and then the other ones are thriving underneath. 
Right. So it, it, they were trying to kill these bacteria for years, and we have some very good antiseptics that are out there. Some of them are alcohol-based, which may not be so good for your gums, but they do kill bacteria. The problem is that the, the cause of periodontal disease is not just the bacteria. It's the change in your inflammatory and protective system or immune system that has occurred that's driving the actual destruction. So if you want to actually manage periodontal disease effectively, you need to have three aspects. One, you need to downregulate or reduce the inflammatory effect. Two, you need to uh, stimulate the tissue to heal and respond and get stronger. So it just can't be downregulated inflammation. It also has to be protective. And the third aspect is killing the bacteria. I don't think any one of them stands out as being you, the only aspect. But if I had to pick one of the three, I would clearly say downregulating down the inflammation will uh, actually be your most protective. And this has been proven through literature studies, actually. I right. mean that if you just if you don't treat the bacteria and just treat the inflammation, you will actually protect yourself as well. So it, reduced inflammation is critical. And the commercial products that are out there today are not doing that. They're simply killing bacteria. So it helps. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing, but it's right. not enough. And we have a serious disease that really needs attention. So when we, we, when we were developing Periactive, we looked for something that would be safe, mm -hmm. easy to use on a day-to-day -day basis, because this is a day-to-day -day disease. You can't have your dentist or your hygienist or any of the therapists coming to your house. You can actually, it would be interesting, but <laughs> coming to your house on a daily basis and helping you brush your teeth. If you don't maintain this daily, you're, we're, we're, we're never going to win the war that we, we have and, and preserve your teeth. So therefore, mm -hmm. we need to have something that you can use in your house that will supplement your normal oral hygiene and actually give you the tool that enable, enable you to protect your gums. So the periactive does something unique. It kills bacteria like all the other mouth rinses, but that's only you know the minor part. The major part is that we actually can it penetrates into the gums. It actually reduces inflammation and and it upregulates the ability of the body to heal and produce more collagen and get more dense, so that it can prevent the future disease. And we've demonstrated this in quite a number of studies in some of the major institutions in the United States. We did studies in Columbia University and University of Michigan, down in, up in Boston and down in um, North Carolina. So we've done many, many clinical studies with this, and it continues to demonstrate a very potent therapeutic effect, far superior to any of the other rinses. So I'm a big fan. <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of your mouthwash? It's called Periactive. Okay. Um, peri for periodontal disease and active because it, it, it does unique things that, that other, mouth, other mouth rinses don't do. Now, where can people find this product? So the product is generally was sold for many years just to dentists. We mm -hmm. felt that that was the, the most intelligent way to bring that product to market. And frankly, being a dentist myself, it was a normal thing for me as well. And dentists would then dispense it to their patients. And it was a very uh, effective method of doing that. But um, we've changed a little bit uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, the consumers are more educated and the American public is very well aware of the importance of oral, oral care and oral mm -hmm. health. And so that was a, one of the drivers. The second one was during Corona, um, um, all those patients who were at the doctors and said, listen, we're not coming to your office, you're closed. How are we going to get our periactive? And so we, they all of a sudden they were we developed an online shipping because we needed to answer their needs. So those right. two factors together really changed our method, and, and we're making a, we're actually going to relaunch now direct to the consumer um, in another month or so. So it's available online at periactive getperiactive.com, uh, and um, uh, we will we ship directly to your home. That sounds wonderful. Because I, I read that there are some actually quite a few uh, mouthwash and mouth rinses that they sell over the counter that could actually be very, very bad for your health and cause problems later in life if it's continually used for a prolonged of, of uh, time. Is that true? Yeah. Well, um, there's been some significant articles associating alcohol based rinses. Um, a number of them people are familiar with, but the um, but basically is drying out your gums and even 
causing damage and even uh, being associated with oral cancers. So we want to avoid the, the alcohol-based rinses and periactive is alcohol-free, but also um, there are a lot of mouth rinses which have very high fluoride content. And fluoride is good for preventing cavities. It's not great for preventing periodontal disease. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem with fluoride is it actually stains your teeth. And there are some very strong antiseptics which are available. Stains your teeth on a topical basis. Don't get me wrong. It can be polished right. off. Yes. Okay. Systemic yes. fluoride as given to children can stain your teeth longer term internally, but topical fluorides don't do it. But the, um, um, and there are some of them that are actually based on chlorhexidine, which are very strong antiseptics. But again, the chlorhexidine itself is not a healthy product. It's a product that kills bacteria, but also is toxic to the superficial cells. So we want to use, and, and part of the reason when we looked at periactive is that how can we give the consumer or the patient or the person suffering from oral care a very safe product. And so the way we designed it was actually sort of unique in that we spent a lot of time analyzing um, natural plant products and how they work. And this was a, a over a decade of research, but we yeah. found what we did was we didn't look at what the research said. We looked at what the plant actually did in our uh, biomodels in the laboratory and how it affected right. sy different systems. So when we selected, it consists of three different botanical products, which are all have a long history of safety. And we know which parts of which plants and in which relationship and concentration will have that therapeutic effect. So some of the plant products will increase the wound healing capacity. Some of them will increase the development of collagen. Some of them thicken the outer protective layer. Some of them reduce inflammation and Inflammation is not a single zipper-like process. It's a yes. cascade of effects, like a waterfall. So you need to target it in multiple sites if you want to see a slowdown in the flow or the cascade of inflammation. So um, it, yes, it was a it was a very uh, intensive project with uh, a lot of very smart people involved with it. I I was proud to be a part of that because it was a really unique group. And um, we've come up with some very interesting data and a product that really is a game changer in periodontal treatment. You know, people don't realize, but a lot of medications actually have um, natural supplement ingredients and, and roots of plants and, and uh, a lot of natural resources in their medications, along with other ingredients that they use. But, you know, uh, supplements and botanical, you know, flowers and roots and, and many different supplements have been used for thousands and thousands of years. Um, and they have been proven sometimes to be just as strong and potent as medications, uh, you know, that we get prescription wise. How do you Absolutely. feel about that? You know, I definitely agree. And it was an eye opener for me because don't forget, I didn't come from the world of natural products. I came from the world of medicine, pharmaceuticals yes. and, and, and science. And for me, it was an eye opener, first of all, in a lot of ways. Number one, ironically, um, about 70% of our drugs until about two or three years ago, where actually their origins of the original molecule that was effective came from natural products. And some of the classic ones that we know about, um, like aspirin, for example, was a direct offshoot from the American Indians or the Native Americans right. who uh, basically said, we use this for pain. They told, the, you know, they were telling the, the pilgrims, we use this for pain. And it was the bark of the white willow tree. And the pilgrims began using it. And then eventually the pharmaceutical companies realized we found the active agent and so, um, and it be, and it's that's aspirin, and that's the, the first anti-inflammatory pain drug that we came up with. And look what it's it's you look what happened after that, you know. So, uh, and there's many others. There's cardiac medications. There's some neurological medications which are used to treat. And so, inside the plant material, there's an enormous amount of power. But the problem is, there's also a lot of information that's not necessarily accurate. And yes. so. But the, the truth often gets lost in the cloud of data, but it doesn't mean that it's not true. <laughs> it means right. that it just has to work a little harder to find it. Exactly. I agree. There is a lot of mis, um, uh information, a lot of, of fake or kind of like a lot of fluff in a lot of the articles that you see on the internet. Now, are there any resources that you feel that people, if they really want to find out accurate information, what are the resources that you use to find out more accurate data? Yeah, it's very hard. I'll give you a good example because we all are um, 
consumers. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we, if just think about we're bought, we're going to buy a after sunburn care, you know, moisturizer, and it has aloe vera in it. Right. And we say, oh, it has aloe vera. That's good. Now, aloe vera does have some very potent uh, healing properties. It really does. But the, you would think that if they're telling us the product has aloe vera in it and as if it's going to help us, well, how much aloe vera does it actually have in it? And right. how do they define the active agent in it? They don't even bother to give us that information because, frankly, we're just happy to have aloe vera in it because it makes us feel good. But we should be asking that question. But the problem is that the regulatory uh, laws do not require that to be answered. Yeah. And it's this there. I wouldn't say it's a gap in the law. It's just... It, the, as we get more and more sophisticated, I do think these things will become necessary. But it's not yet. So it's hard. It's very hard for the consumer to know really yeah. what's working. Yeah. And I feel there's a lot of marketing, you know, exaggerated. I call it exaggerated marketing on a lot of the, the products that make people think that something is actually something that it's not. It's just the terminology that they use, you know, makes people think it's actually better or it's this when they use a couple of fluff words in between that make people think that, you know, like no added antibiotics, you know, when they, when they purchase, like, let's say organic eggs, you know, you're looking for organic eggs or chicken and it says no added, you know, um, antibiotics. What some of them are meaning is that there's no additional antibiotics in the product, but it's not, you know, free from antibiotics. And I see that with a lot of different products, you know, in all in different industries. I'll actually share with you a funny anecdote, but it's funny and a bit sad. Yeah. There was a natural product that was doing some testing and it failed. It didn't really do any better than the placebo. Right. And so it happens sometimes, right? And so mm -hmm. they went to market with a very strong claim, unsurpassed efficacy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, funny. that true story, very large company, unnamed. You know, but yeah. uh, but but it's a completely true story because I know the person <laughs> who was involved. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. That's very funny. Mm -hmm. And when so when you're people... right. You have the consumer has to, wants to be careful, but the truth is that the regulatory environment is not giving him the tools to be uh, as as uh, as as knowledgeable a consumer as they would like to be. Yes, <laughs> and I I think it's. You know, the, I also like I worry about pain products like a, a lot. There are a lot of uh, products that will take away the pain temporarily and people will use that for a prolong of time. And the infection is actually getting worse in the person's mouth. But they're just it's, they're doing it for temporary relief. But sometimes people do it more, you know, than they should. And when people are encountering some inflammation and pain, you mentioned earlier, they should probably like wait a day or two. Like if they if it is it. As soon as, as soon as you feel that pain and that discomfort, is there a specific, it, just wait a day or two, or is, do you have any other advice that you have to the patient? I think, I think people should really just be, use their common sense because mm -hmm. if it's getting better and it's getting better every day, less pain, less bleeding, give it an extra day or two. Let's see what happens, but don't give it an extra week or two because that's a long time. So, right. I, but if it's getting worse, and and it's not really responding, and it's and these and you waited a day or two or three, and it's you're not feeling any benefit. I think it might be time to think about an alternative. <laughs> right, <laughs> so. exactly. Can you explain to people why it's so dangerous to let things go? You know, prolong like what some are like. Give an example of maybe some of the different illnesses that could occur if you let you know any sure. of these infections infections you know go for a longer period of time than they should. So aside from, let, let's just talk first locally about periodontal disease. If the mm -hmm. infection drives down into the bone, you can have an infection in the bone, which is it can spread and is quite serious by itself. Uh, you're causing damage to the supporting bone of the tooth. So you'll have the issues of loose teeth, spreading teeth, and others, they're drifting, and yeah. abscesses, and, and they, they can be incredibly painful and, and really um, and no, need acute treatment. The the oral have the oral is is it filled with nerve cells, and when yeah. they get excited in a negative way, when they get irritated, they'll let you know. So that's in the oral care area. 
But um, in the area, what happens is if you have that chronic infection, it's seeping into your bloodstream. And it's a very broad area because the tooth, when it's spread out, as I said earlier, it's a, it's a broad area of exposure, a large surface area. And so you're increasing the infection in your, uh, in your whole bloodstream and you're elevating the inflammation in your whole bloodstream. And they have found oral bacteria actually in the plaques around the heart and during that were involved in thrombosis or, you know, causes for heart disease and for cardiac events and uh, yeah. many other things. So they, these bacteria do cause distantly located inflammatory reactions, which can lead to very, very serious consequences and even loss of life. And yeah. so, um, whereas that's rare, it's not a healthy process while it's taking place. So even if you don't have a cardiac event, you don't have to let it, you know, continue to fester. Um, but long term, it will. It, as I said earlier, it's associated with so many different diseases and right. um, and serious diseases and life impacting diseases. But one other factor, which I think is important to, is cr I would say, critical to remember. When you have already a disease, when a person suffers from a history of heart disease or suffers from diabetes or rheumatic arthritis or any of these diseases which have either an infectious or an inflammatory component, the oral infection will make it significantly worse. If you treat the oral infection, you will stabilize the diseases. It's right. not a it's not an exact number because it all depends on how stable your disease is and how much it's being off, 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 off put and is, or destabilized from the infection. But they definitely, they, they co-impact each other. If you have bad yeah. and unstable diabetes, your oral care will be worse. But if you take care of your diabetes and you don't take care of your oral care, your diabetes will not stabilize. It's funny you said that because that was the next question I was going to ask you and you just answered it. Yes, because I was wondering so. about that. If people had previous, you know, illnesses that oral infection could actually possibly make it worse, which you just said, it, it, you know, and yeah. I think that's- And there are many studies to, to, to demonstrate this. They, they looked at large populations with unstable oral care with, and, then, and looked at their diabetic levels and then they, you know, they cleaned them up and treated their oral care and the diabetic levels, the sugar levels uh, stabilized. So there really are direct uh, impacting factors here. So it really seems like inflammation could be a, a very dangerous aspect, you know, when it, when it comes to like having oral oral um, disease or an infection going on, that, that, that inflammation that builds up could actually affect the entire body. Yeah, there's no question that you're, you're just, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I don't even have anything to add, It's which is unusual for me. <laughs> you said it perfectly. <laughs> you need to take care of your mouth if you want to look good, speak well, eat well, and be healthy. <laughs> so. Can you provide some tips to people on what is the proper oral care, how people each day should really take care of their teeth? Because there are a lot of different things that they could do that they should do that I, you know, I guarantee you a lot of people don't do. Yeah, I will give it a try because it's hard to give the right recipe for the for yeah. entire population. But right. um, you do want to brush your teeth uh, on a daily basis, twice a day. The reason we need to do this twice a day is plaque actually builds up extremely rapidly. A half an hour after you've brushed your teeth, the proteins in your mouth are starting to accum accumulate back on your tooth. The bacteria are starting to accumulate back on your teeth. So they're not harmful bacteria at that stage. They're early stage bacterial populations and they're normal in the mouth. But if you leave them, they will change. So you want to brush your teeth twice a day. You should be using a soft toothbrush because plaque is soft. Plaque can be wiped off or, or you know, and the pre reason for the bristles as opposed to let's say a rag or something like that where you wipe them is that the bristles actually cut through the, the film that the bacteria built up in. So it's it's like on a microscopic level, it's like using a brush to clean a surface. You, you, you basically clean up them more effectively. So a soft brush with uh, very pointed gently towards the gums, not a lot of pressure because you know the the famous story about uh, the water rubbing, you know, slowly but surely eroding the rocks in the river. Yeah. You have that in the mouth too. If you brush your teeth at a bad angle, you will actually, shockingly, wear away your teeth on a regular mm -hmm. basis. And it, it's yeah. it's we see it not. It's, I, I I laugh, but it's not uncommon. And right. we see deep clefts in people's teeth. And so we basically soft brush, 
directed gently towards the gums. The people quote a 45 degree angle, but that's not always that's not always precise. Where the tips of the bristles should just slightly go below the gum line to clean out as much bacteria as you can. So after you finish brushing, you've cleaned out. The, don't forget the tooth has four sides, right? And not including the bite, the chewing surface, there were the occlusal surface. So you need to brush. You're only brushing two of those sides when you brush your mouth effectively. So then you need to clean between your teeth. And there's a lot of different ways to clean. The classic one, which is very effective, is using floss. But frankly, it's not fun and it's not easy. And I do yeah. understand people who can. But they have little brushes that can go between your teeth now. And if you get the right yeah. ones, and they're, they're really easy to use. They're really comfortable. And if they're not exactly like floss, they're 85% the same. So right. that, especially if you can't do the flossing, which, you know, let's put it like this. We're all not all, we're not all perfect. Right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so use those interdental brushes, the, the interdental meaning between the teeth to clean out that plaque that's there. And then when you're all done, also brush the surface of the chewing surface of the teeth, because even though the plaque doesn't usually gather there because you're, you're moving it around as you chew, there's different little, uh, structural elements which can hold plaque and so just a simple quick brushing of the surface of the teeth and that should be pretty thorough but in the end the reason why you want to use a mouth rinse is you you've you have a lot of loose bacteria in your mouth that you've cleaned off and right. you, you haven't reached all the areas there so the purpose of the mouth rinse would be to wash away those bacteria kill the remaining bacteria and yes. then with the periactive it's actually driving into the gums and actually reducing inflammation and promoting healing so that'll make your gums stronger so that whatever you're not cleaning up will be, the body will have the capacity to resist it. Oh, that's, that's amazing. That I I like this product. I actually, I think I'm going to get it after I get off the phone with you after, after we start, we finish this interview, but I, I have a question for you that came to mind when you were talking now, toothpaste, there has been many debates and there has been a lot of different articles stating that certain toothpastes are not good for you. And some of the ingredients they actually put in some of these toothpastes that are on the market can be very hazardous to a person's health. So are, are there, and you know, is that statement true or do you have suggestions on what toothpaste probably would be better for people to use or what kind of toothpaste they should look for when purchasing toothpaste? Sure. So I think, yes, there are a lot of toothpaste on the market. And unfortunately, there are some products that are out there that are potentially causing damage. Um, the, the easiest one to understand really would be the abrasive toothbrushes. Some of the whitening toothbrushes actually have a light abrasive in them, which if you use them, you will actually wear out the enamel and the surface of your teeth. So that's not a good thing. You can use an abrasive toothpaste occasionally, but it should not be a regular everyday, twice a day product. So if sometimes you feel like stain builds up in your mouth a little more rapidly than you'd like. Then yeah. if you use that product once or twice a week, you know, instead of your regular toothpaste, then actually that's okay because it's such a mild effect that you can tolerate that and you'll be happier because your teeth will be cleaner and you'll look yeah. better. But right. on the other hand, so that's in terms of the abrasives. In terms of the it const, what it, the constituents, <clears throat> fluoride is actually a very good product. I know there's a lot of noise about the potential for a, a cancerous effect from fluoride. There's not a lot of validity in the literature to support that. We all know that drugs are not good. Right. We, we, you know, we, and we, you take them, everything you put in your body that works also has a potential for giving you a negative effect as well. So right. they're, they're, it's not that it's a good or bad thing. I'm happy to say nobody should be taking drugs, but, uh, or pharmaceuticals, but if you need it, you're, in, you need it. And when you right. need it, that is an overriding need and it'll bring you back to health and then you'll get off that drug. But you need to maintain your overall health. And sometimes they're an important and necessary uh, part of your uh, quality of life and, and preserving your life. So um, fluoride is an important product. It does work in preventing um, cavities. What it does is it actually, it, 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 I don't want to get too scientific, but certain ions in the fluoride replace certain ions on the surface of the tooth and make it more uh, resistant to acidic decay of bacteria. So to translate that, the outer surface gets harder from the fluoride. Very little of it is actually absorbed in your body because most of it is you spit it out afterwards and you can rinse it out afterwards. And the concentrations that the companies usually put into fluoride 
uh, toothpastes are very low because by the law, they have to protect against toxicity of children who might decide to eat an entire tube of toothpaste in one sitting, which has happened and is what, and they're protected. So we're very, the, 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 the regulatory laws around these uh, consumer products are often very strict. As right. opposed to the natural supplements, which are a little more loose just because of the political environment. But so I'm a big fan of a fluoride toothpaste. Some of the toothpastes have additional antiseptics included in them. Some of them have been around for years and then proven to be unsafe. I think right. you're best off with a, a fluoride toothpaste and a good thorough oral rinse, which you know will will together will really help control the uh, your 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 oral your oral potential oral diseases. Because sometimes there's so many different products that you can go into the into the aisle where they have all the tooth products and you can like go cross-eyed because there's so many different <laughs> products to purchase. And, you know, and they do have ones for sensitive teeth. Like, and how do you feel about the ones that's, you know, that, that you know, that kind of promote, well, if you have sensitive teeth, use this toothpaste. Do, do you feel that, is there a difference? Yeah. Yeah, it's there's let me let me sort of address the issue of sensitive teeth. There are two types of sensitive teeth, and I think it's important for the consumer to differentiate. When you're when you say you have sensitive teeth, are your gums hurting you or your tooth is your tooth hurting you? If okay. your gums are hurting you, it's like an irritated part of it's like irritated skin. You'll feel soreness and 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 pain, uh, right. especially when you brush. That the sensitive toothpaste do not deal with that. The periactive would help with that. But right. but if you have a sharp sensitive pain, very sharp, very acute, very short lasting, that's tooth pain. And there, those sensitive sensitivity toothpaste do work. The problem is everyone works slightly differently. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. But what you should do is try it for two to three weeks. Use it in place of your regular toothpaste. And if it's not working, don't give up because one of them may work, whereas the other one didn't. Don't give up on sense on anti or let's say. He set toothpaste for sensitive teeth. Try another one, but make sure you look at the active ingredients and make sure that the active ingredient is different. They have potassium nitrate, they have strontium chloride, they have different materials for these things. They all have a certain therapeutic benefit. And right. um, without even going into the details, they're all basically trying to create a denser, more, uh, more mineralized surface on the place where you're sensitive to protect that. Your dentist can also help with that by giving you concentrated materials as well. There are, there are professional products for this use as well. But if you want to try to treat it over the counter, don't give up quickly. Slow but surely find the right product that works for you. There are plenty of them. They do now, work. What, is there a difference between the organic toothpaste versus regular toothpaste? Because you have a lot of companies coming out with organic toothpaste, and then you have your regular, you know, toothpaste companies that have been here forever. So, is there a difference? Is is should you sway to one side more than the other, or are there a lot of toothpaste out there that are very good? You just have to look at the ingredients and you know educate yourself a little bit better. So, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a big believer in organic products, uh, but on the other hand, I like scientifically driven organic products. So. Um, if someone just puts a group of plant materials together in a toothpaste and tells me it's going to be good for me, it's not necessarily correct. Right. So I know fluoride works. It'll protect your teeth. And there are some things in there which are not necessarily good for you, which the organic toothpaste often don't have. But the organic toothpaste right. are not giving you the cavity protection that you need. Right. So there's a balance there. So I, I think that to, to, to my knowledge right now, there are no scientifically driven uh, organic toothpaste that are out there in the market. They're all sort of marketing to your want for your, your preference for an organic product. I would love to see a high quality organic toothpaste in the market. I haven't right. found it yet. Okay. No, that's good to know because you, you have, you have yeah. a, a lot of new products coming out and, you know, people see the word organic and immediately they want to run and purchase that because, you know, they're wor worried about the harmful chemicals that could be in the other toothpaste. But you also want a toothpaste that's going to protect your teeth and you don't want to end up with decayed teeth and you don't want to end up with any types of infection and you want to protect your teeth as, as best as you can. So that's that's good information to know. Yeah. Now, is there any other suggestions that you have that people should know about good oral care? Um, I think, you know, just awareness in general, try to avoid, I mean, the, the classic foods which are, not good for you are basically these sticky high sugar foods which you yeah. basically 
lodge themselves between your teeth and just release high concentrations of sugar. Right. <laughs> we all know that we have to have one once in a while. <laughs> but, <laughs> but on the other hand, but but we're not we're not telling you you should. <laughs> right. So, exactly. Exactly. Those things are are really uh, killers. And even surprisingly, even some some natural products like dried fruits, the you know yeah. dried apricots and raisins, those have a lot of stickiness to them as well. And and they're probably not ideal for your teeth where there's, there's, no, yeah. there's not been any studies about it. It's just a logical assumption. So uh, just be aware that you don't want to have that kind of sticky material sitting around in your teeth. And if you have an opportunity to clean it off after you've eaten that or even rinse your mouth thoroughly, even with water, it'll help decrease yeah. the sugar concentration. Now, should you be flossing each time you eat? No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with cleaning the food out between your teeth. Don't drive yourself crazy. It has to do with just... <laughs> Uh, cleaning the level of bacteria off. If you get some sugar in your, in your, but you have very immature bacteria there because you've cleaned them in the morning, you don't have to worry about it. And you'll clean right. them at night. So you're doing fine. Max, flossing max twice a day, max, I think once a day is probably sufficient for most people. Okay, that's very good to know. So basically you want to get rid of that bacteria and you want to have a controlled, you know, amount of inflammation in your in your body because our bodies always have some type of inflammation and usually inflammation occurs when the body something's wrong and the body's trying to fix the situation. So it just sends the inflammation to that area and that's when we have a lot of times the buildup of inflammation. But um, you know, I think the information that you provided is very good. I uh, you know, I um yeah. So when you use your product, do you have to use it once a day or do you do it once in the morning and once at night? We recommend twice a day. And we've based this on the studies that we did. We've tested once a day, twice a day, and three times a day. In a, okay. And we found that even though three times a day was slightly better, it wasn't necessary. So okay. there are people who are in acute stages. We, we use our product and we'll often torque it up and use it for a short period, three to four times a day because they're suffering from something. But um, once it, you know, torques down again, then you can uh, go back to twice a day. Twice a day is sufficient. But in my office, I see the difference between people who are using it twice a day and once a day. And once a day works, but it doesn't work as well as we'd like. So this could be a product to prevent any type of um, possible infections or problems with your teeth. And it also can help you. Can it help you if there is a problem and kind of sure. help? It'll during... reduce the acuteness of periodontal disease. If periodontal disease should still be treated because it's inside. See, what happens right. is right. if you have gum destruction or bone destruction, what happens? You have the, the, the tooth, then you have yeah. the bone, and then you have the gum that's covering that. And if you lose the bone there, and the gum may still be covering that. And if the gum is still covering that, you have a space that exists now between the gum and the tooth where the bone used to be. Right. And so we call that actually, ironically, a periodontal pocket, because it looks just like a pocket on a shirt where yes. there's an outer layer and an inner layer, but there's a space in between. And that space gets filled with bacteria and inflammatory mediators, which are what stimulate the body's reaction to have negative inflammation. And the, the way most mouth rinses work is you sw switch them around your mouth, but they actually don't go into the periodontal pocket because they can't because there's a fluid flow from the bottom of the pocket out. So it's like a counter pressure. So it's pushing the bacteria, right. the oral rinse out. But the periactive was designed to actually go right through your gums. So it'll go right through your gums and into the pocket and work in there. It won't kill those oh, bacteria, wow. but you reduce the inflammation. It, it, it really is a... Uh, yeah, it works That's like a, it's a very strong product. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so thank you for reminding me of that. Sometimes I forget to tell you. So. No, that that's very good to know that, you know, it, that's amazing that it could actually go through the gum. It can go into the fluid and it can actually help kill any bacteria that might've been stored in that one area and actually help, you know, prevent, um, you know, any type of infection from occurring. So this is great because it's, it's not, it's not only a product for prevention, but it also can help you if you are going through something. So it's something that you take continuously to have, you know, to, to maintain your oral, your oral care. Well, we've used this uh, for tens of thousands of patients already, and we have not really seen any side effects so far. So it's a wow. validation for the natural basis. It's a validation for, you know, the, you know, the benefits. People who use it usually keep using it the rest of their lives and you actually find that it helps if they don't 
use it, if, you know, a month later, they'll start feeling the, you know, the, the refractory nature or the, you know, the, the, the kickback into an inflamed state. Um, we actually, we feel confident enough about the product to offer to, we, we plan to offer to the consumers and when, when we, on their uh, now, a six, a 60 days or your, uh, with, with reduced bleeding or your money back. So, and we're perfectly prepared to do that because we don't expect to have to refund anybody their money. You see an effect here. So is this, is when we want to, um, so is the product right now launched to the public right now? It, it, right now it's still at the dentist, but within about another uh, two months, it'll be in the, it'll be available to the consumers and there'll be a strong marketing campaign to notify people. Oh, excellent. So if they go to your website, they'll probably can be, they can, you know, keep an eye on it and find out exactly yes. when they can purchase it. The website is getperiactive.com. And actually I believe in, in uh, next month, they'll already start taking, uh, you know, pre-orders already. Oh, excellent. Consumers. Excellent. And um, let me just make sure we covered all this because this is very good. This this product sounds amazing. So they can go on your website. They can keep track of when it's going to be actually available to the public. And and if yes. they go to their dentist, can they get you know if they ask the dentist most about it? Dentists most dentists have it, and dentists certainly can get online and order it from us. So yeah. Oh, excellent, excellent. All right. So for now, between the two month period, they could actually ask their doc, their dentist and the dentist yeah. could order it for them. We, we we actually have, you know, the, the failure of success because we're actually it's we the, the, the demand outstripped our expectations, but it'll be back right. in the shelves ready, you know, within about another month. So. Oh, that's excellent. And are you are you is your uh, information also on the social medias? Can they keep? Can they go it onto your website? It is now. We actually we, it is now, and it will be. Uh, it'll that that will be increasing with time. Oh, excellent, excellent. And is there? Do you have any type of blog on your website that they could actually learn a little bit more about oral care if they want to keep up with anything? Um, it, it, actually, I'm I'm not your classic social media person. I I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good at dentistry, but I'm not so good at social media. So, um, so can they maybe ask you a question if they go on to either your so, sure, social sure. media and network? Gonna, and they and go there, are, the there are there are better people than me who better people are better at social media than me handling that aspect of the company. Uh, I'm oh, great excellent. at product development, <laughs> but no, that's quite okay. <laughs> most people, you know, most people are one or the other. So, you know, but it's good to know I'm that. Definitely, if they do I'm have... definitely one, not the other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So, you Somebody know, said you need to have an Instagram account. So I said, okay, I'm happy to have an Instagram account. She said, well, who do you want to follow? I said, Actually, nobody. <laughs> so, you can follow me. I, yeah, I'm following you now. I'm looking for people to follow. <laughs> so, anyway, so uh, yeah. So anyway, yes, there will be uh, there will be more social media about this. Oh, this is excellent. So once again, just tell everybody your website so they have it fresh in their head. So it's getperiactive.com. And um, if you put on periactive onto the into into your uh, you'll you'll find us. Oh, this is excellent. Oh, I can't tell you, Bill, this has been a, a world of great information because so many people come to me and especially on my websites, they ask me questions about oral care. You know, they want to know the answers because it has been, you know, brought to, into the media and the awareness of, you know, taking care of your teeth, the importance and what could happen if it doesn't, you know, if they don't take care of their teeth and people want to learn more. So this is really, this is great that you provide this product and that, society is actually taking awareness of the importance of oral care and what it could do, you know, what could happen, the possibilities if they don't keep up with their oral care. So you provided us with a whirlwind of tips today and the product sounds amazing. I'm going to go and look for it and I'll probably be one of your first customers to purchase it. So <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Thank perfect. Um, thank you so much. Anyway, thank you, Stacy. Appreciate it. Pleasure to be here and a pleasure to chat. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest with us today. We have Dr. Levine. And